Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Week Ahead. I'm Tony Nash, and I'm joined today by Albert Marco, Nick Glinsman, and Tracy Shukart. Um, before we get started, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us get exposure, and it helps you get reminded uh, when a new episode is out. So please go ahead and do that. Um, uh, Tracy, Nick, Albert, um, I hope you survived the week well. I hope everything went well uh, on your side. I know we've all been talking about uh, market activity, and it seems like you guys survived pretty well. So if we look at last week's show, we kind of it kind of played out exactly as we said. We talked about a stock dump, thanks to Albert. We talked about a bonds dump, at least for most of the week, uh, thanks to mm -hmm. Nick. And we talked about crude at nude highs, thanks to Tracy. So well done and congratulations, guys. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what it means for the week ahead. So Albert, let's look at equities first. Um, it looks like the S&P is down about 8% from the highs from the peak on Jan 4th. Um, in general, what's moving the market right now? Why are we seeing a, a fall that sharp? Well, I, the better question is what's not moving, and that's pretty much the Fed pump list. I mean, there's nine to 12 names that they generally use to pump the market and they've just been absent. And you've seen that with Netflix. I mean, usually back in the last 18 months, whenever one of these tech names missed earnings or showed some kind of weakness, they still rallied. But this is the first week that you've actually seen these names just with no bid, zero whatsoever. And the market absolutely just, just cratered. And I've got some statistics out here that are, that are, uh, <laughs> Quite, quite interesting, like only 24 stocks in the United States above a $3 billion uh, cap are up 100% year over year, mm -hmm. right? Only 114 up a measly 50% out of 1,400 are up this year or year over year. The last time we even tested the 200-day moving, aver moving average was June of 2020. Okay. And, and, and so, so what you're seeing is just this super, super massive uh, bubble in the in equities that is just deflating at the moment. And so, it's because the Fed doesn't have a bid up. So Albert, you know, I look at a company like Peloton, right? They've still got a $9 billion valuation. So it seems to me like this thing has a ways to go. Is that fair to say? Oh yeah, I think honestly, I, I really think we should be at 4,100 or even 3,900, 3,950 to be, to be quite honest with you. I, do, do they let it go down that low? I, I, I don't know because at that point, things can get crazy and get out of control. And the yep. last thing they want to do is see some kind of, you know, complete market collapse. So 39.50 would be about a, what, a 17% fall or something like that from the- 17% fall. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Which so is, that would be a real, that would be considered a real bear market. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't, Tony. 20%. Well, I know, but I think it's close enough. I know technically bear market is 20%, but I think people would be panicking if we crossed. Oh, uh, this is a perception yeah. game. Yeah, this is a perception game. Yep. Uh, Nick is right. 20% would be a bear market thing. But in, in, in this market, in the perception of this market, anything under 4,300 would be Armageddon for these people. I mean, can you imagine how many bag holders there are and tech <laughs> names and, oh, yeah. and meme names? Trap longs. There's huge, both yeah. professional and retail, there are trap longs. Yeah. And you can see that today. 61 minutes was the difference between the Bloomberg headline that said down 2% NASDAQ recouped all the losses. 61 minutes, recoup the losses, straight back down again. Yep. <laughs> that tells you there's a lot of trap longs. I think, I, I think that the, what also happens is because everything was so tech weighted, mm. right? And that um, the puke basically in tech, right? Is causing, uh, margin calls, which in effect makes you uh, forcibly <laughs> makes you have to get rid of other positions, right? Sell what you have to. So because that sector was so overweighted and mm -hmm. these were so ridiculously high and right. everybody was piled into that sector, that's, you know, that brings down the rest of everything, basically. Right. So it's interesting, Tracy, you said the PEs were so ridiculously high. Well, they're they still, still are kind of right. They they still are. I don't mean to say that I mean, we haven't had that big of a correction. So, the, yeah, they, I think the margin point was very important. So yep. Eddie Arini came out with a, a chart, and the margin that we have in the market is still massively exceeding what we saw in two thousand at the peaks in two thousand eight, and even in the peak of 
that crossed over the year 2000. So, so that me again, I go back to the point that's clearly suggestive of trap longs. And Tracy's right, people will sell what they can at a profit first to hit mm -hmm. their margin calls. What we haven't seen, and that's where you get a capitulation, I think we're far away from a capitulation, mm -hmm. it could be much longer and deeper, is where people are then forced to sell those equities where they have the margin calls being hit. Right, but it, with the degree of margin that we have right now, if a capitulation were to come, could actually come pretty quickly, right? Bear markets are always that much quicker than the bull market. Yeah, that's not absolutely. a prediction. It's just a what if, right? So yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Right. Okay, so um, so where are we looking at next week? Do you think we're we're continuing to like? Do people want to hold equities over the weekend? Obviously, we we don't think many wanted to because today was a sell off. Um, but do you think people come into Monday and Tuesday uh, feeling like okay, we're ready to play again and we want to get long again? Uh, I think it's a chop day for the for the first two days of the week. Honestly, um, I don't think the seeing what the market's done. I don't think the Fed can be really too hawkish at this point, which would probably make the market rip another hundred points up. Yep. But there's really there's really nothing to rally about in this market until some you know until some fundamentals get sorted out. So the Fed is, it, it, from your perspective, Albert, the Fed is kind of seems to be standing by right now is that fair to say yeah they have to stand by i mean they have they've, they've they've threw out all their arsenal of pumping the market for the last 18 months that you know at this point what, what possibly more can they do without just causing you know systemic risk on the line i mean if had the, from their perspective of why would you why would you keep this show going without some kind of especially when you're looking at a, a fiscal cliff coming in march right or february march so right. you know so I don't want to talk bonds yet, Nick, but I, I just want to. So, do yeah, you see? No, I know, I know. But do you <laughs> see a, a do you see a scenario where the Fed does come in, say next week, to save the day, or do you think they're just going to sit passively and kind of wait and see? And Tracy, you know, to you too, like, do you guys do you guys see the Fed coming back in to say, oh, you know, ten percent from the high, we're we're good for now. We just want to pause it and we're going to intervene a little bit to make sure things are okay. Or do you uh -huh. think they'll continue to stand by? I'm sitting here, I, I wrote today equating Jay Powell to the captain of Titanic, flying through all these icebergs and not really worried about navigating through. They've got a lot of problems here. So they've got Joe Biden, please get rid of inflation. You've mm -hmm. got the chap that runs fiscal now, Joe Manchin. I'm not talking about anything until this inflation is sorted out. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So they've got the political backing to actually start to do something. They've actually, the bond market, today's price action was partly in reflection of uh, the stock market, but actually with what's going on for the last couple of days in the stock market, well, bonds should have, the bond market should have done a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, so the bond market's on hold. It's sort of on hold. And they're waiting to see one of three scenarios. One is the Fed tells you they're going to rate up hike rates in March, and that's when QE will finish. The alternative is they're going to change policy guidance to indicate the March rate hike at but end QE immediately. Because remember, they're still doing QE. And then the third is to raise rates next week. Okay. Which so Nick, I'm going to stop you right there. And I'm going to say we, we got a, a viewer question from at Fed Chairman B. And he <laughs> says, what's the Fed's end game? Push interest rates back and live with inflation? or hike rates, crash the markets, and let the commodity enter recession, let the economy enter recession? And what happens to the high yield and bond issuance market? So you've kind of already spoken to those first two in your scenarios. So what happens to the, say, bond issuance market in the scenarios that you're talking about? Well, we saw, we've seen an enormous amount of bond issues. Okay. Right at the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of last year, that told me that corporate treasurers were actually getting nervous that the Fed was going to start to take notice of the inflation and react accordingly. Uh, high yield will underperform, as will, uh, as I think, will emerging market credit, dollar credit, uh, for a variety of well, reasons. underperform, you said. Will underperform. Yep. They'll okay. get hit. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in terms of the emerging market, dollar credit, that's also a dollar point. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, I'll, I'll stick by my, my comments of last week and I keep reiterating them in everything I write. 
I'm not convinced yet of this Fed's fighting credentials. I haven't seen the inner Volcker in Jay Powell. So on that basis, <clears throat> action more than words, and those words come in the in the guise of forward guidance. Until we, I'm really fast. Wednesday's a, a real crapshoot. Okay. We, we just don't know. When you say real crapshoot, what do you mean? We don't know what the Fed's going to do. They could do it, you know, I think the most likely thing is they're going to indicate, guide that they're going to hike rates in March and NQE then, which is not really anything new, right. despite all the hawkish talk from some of the other board members. The when you say, do you say NQE, do you mean stop purchases or slow purchases? Stop purchases. They've already started to slow those in. anyway. So okay. stop purchases. They should, there's no reason for QE from, the, from all the data that they give us and all the guidelines that they've given us for inflation, unemployment. Yeah, they don't need to do QE. And Q well, I, I disagree with that because if they don't get fiscal, they they're going to have to continue on with QE. I'll tell you that right now. The if they don't get fiscal in March, they're going to they'll just unleash more QE. Okay, Only but that's a Q2 issue, right? That's not a Q2 yeah. issue necessarily. So let me ask you this: I, over the past week or so, I've seen people talking about a 50 basis point hike in March. Is that yeah. is that realistic? No. Uh, I don't think it is. I think it was actually <laughs> the right thing to do. It would that would bear the anti-inflation teeth of uh, an aggressive inflation fi inflation fighting Fed. Right. Absolutely. You would. know, it would be really interesting if they watched what you know BOC uh, has you know it meets on the 20, 26th as well and has a rate decision. So if I were the Fed, I would be watching what BOC does. And how does that affect the economy? And then we'll wait till March to make a decision. So first, Tracy, are you saying something nice about Canada? I... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying let them be the guinea pig, you know? I mean, okay. right? So let them raise rates first. Let's see how that goes. Because really, you know, what the Trudeau administration has done is let this go amok, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, uh, if I were the Fed, I would say, you know, let's see, let's see how, let's see what BOC does. Let's see them, you know, raise rates. Let's see how, how that happens to the, the environment. I mean, that's what I would be thinking. And then make your decision in March. And, right. and, and is there any chance, I, I think it's close to zero, but is there any chance that the Fed could do something like a 10 basis point hike instead of 25? Because that's what BOE did, right? Yeah, it, that's a waste I of time. Waste it's a time. waste of time. It's a waste of time. But at least it shows that they're doing something. I mean, they're in their minds, anyways. I mean, well, that's kind of a, a kind of a, a non sequitur. Like it's kind of a look. We did something, but we didn't really do anything. Yeah, the bond market. That's would what, not like it. The bond market would not. Okay. Would not be impressed. Good. Okay. Good. So the bound of fifty basis points or ten basis points, like neither of those extremes is going to happen. I don't know. I I, I would say it's more. It's more likely they do 10 basis points than 50 by, by, by a long shot. You know, I can see them doing 10 basis points just to say that they did something. You know, that, I mean, that's what this Fed does is show that they do something, but not really do anything. Yes, it is. So <laughs> that's perfect. Okay, so, so on uh, staying with inflation, I guess, let's talk about energy markets and commodities markets. Tracy, you know, you called a, a new high in crude this week. We saw it. We've seen those prices come off a little bit. Kind of, why are we seeing things come off a little bit now? Well, I mean, I think, well, in general, the broader markets are coming off, right? So sell what you have to. Um, in addition, I mean, this market was way overbought, right? So mm -hmm. personally, being an oil bull that I am, I welcome kind of this pullback and I think mm. that this is healthy for the market, right? And so, and I wouldn't be surprised, especially because we're not even in high demand season. So right. I would like to see this market kind of go sideways for a bit because I think we got a little bit over extent, overextended, you know, follow through in that 80 to $87 range for a little bit at least um, until uh, we reach you know, the new seasonal tendency higher. Seasonal, so that's later in Q1? Or? So it's, uh, it starts um, late February. Okay. That starts that demand season. That's when usually seasonally you tend to go long oil. Okay. 
Okay, very good. So you so you think we're sideways or on a pause, at least for the next say four weeks or something? Yeah, I would like to see that from a technical standpoint. I would like to see some of that bullishness kind of being worked out of the market a bit. Okay, very good. I I like that. I think that's solid. Now, what about nat gas? Because you know, a few weeks ago we were talking about you know, uh, nat gas you know, surging, and we've seen things really calm down despite some cold fronts in North America and Europe. So what's happening there? Right. So we had two, two major things happen um, in the market, where is the 46 vessels carrying nat gas are starting to arrive in Europe, and that's alleviating pressure on that, uh, on that particular market. And then we also had uh, China Sinopec, uh, flood the market with cargoes for 2022. They put on, they put out 46 cargoes uh, for sale, so that alleviated pressure in for 2022. So that alleviated pressure for uh, JKM or the Asian market. So, uh, in general, we're seeing supply hit those markets. So we've seen a pullback in those two markets. As far as the U.S. is concerned. You know, where it's still a range bound market. We are up a little bit today because we have very cold weather in the Northeast and into Canada, and they share partial grid. Um, and I hear Texas is going to have some sleet. Um, but um, but that's pretty much why that, that market really hasn't gone anywhere and why we've seen some pullback in the Asian and European markets. Okay. But we've seen some action in coal last couple of days, right? Coal is, yes, coal is surging once again. So right. we're at $300 coal in the Asian markets. We're at about 270 um, in the Australian markets. We're at about 165 on the spot market in the U.S. Um, so that is surging because it's being used as uh, an energy alternative, right? <laughs> <laughs> which I is incredibly crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's, let's talk about metals for a minute. We've seen some chatter about gold this week and gold is ending up slightly this week. Some industrial metals, copper is also ending up slightly this week. So what's happening there as well? Is that just a slight rotation away from equities or is there real demand there? I mean, if we're talking about precious metals, obviously that is a completely different trade than if we're talking about base metals or industrial sure. metals, such as copper. Um, so, um, I mean, what I would like to see is like for the for gold, for example, I would like to see a solid close over 1835 to really okay. put this into a bull market, even though I'm bullish miners in general. Uh, because of the lack of capex, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but really, that market has not flipped bullish yet. Right. Um, and then if we're looking at something like, and, and the uh, copper is still sideways too, although long term, I'm very much a copper bull because of reasons that I've stated in other right. uh, yep. before. Very good. Okay, guys. So aside from Wednesday with the Fed, what are we looking for uh, for the week ahead? Um, uncertainty with equities? Does it, is that a downside bias or an upside bias with that uncertainty? I think what will be really interesting is we had $3.3 trillion worth of uh, options notional expiring today. So um, I think next week will be the tell really what direction this market is going. Do we bounce next week? I'm not giving a day specifically, but, sure. you know. Um, There'll be a flat was it an options thing or was it, you know, are, are people going to buy the dip? Well, I think that because that's the second largest uh, options expiry ever <laughs> in the history mm. of options expiry, you know, I, I think we need to be looking, you know, next week to really see where we stand as far as the markets are concerned. Okay. Very good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, options expiry was uh, long delta. So the, the trip. The market makers were all having to sell their delta positions rapidly, which is why you saw, I think, yesterday, the late, you know, late in the session, it really accelerated on the downside, having been up during the day, uh, and then today, you know, it just couldn't get a bid, uh, which I think combined with, I think the thing that holds this market down is possibly the trap longs. They'll mm. be nervous this weekend. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to see what 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 happens Sunday night in OPEX still, 
um, Sunday night going into Monday morning if it's, but I, like I said, I think that we chop Monday, Tuesday, and then probably, you know, rise up with the Fed being a little bit more dovish than people think they're going to be. I think so. Okay. I think, sure. yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, they may have to. Although yeah, they, after, they, after this week. not happy about that, but I think they I, after, I mean, I mean look, I, it, it, it's consistent with what I think until I've seen the, the anti-inflation tea. I don't yeah. trust at all. Yeah. Well, nobody well, trusts the Fed. They're, they're, <laughs> the anti-inflation teeth have been a little bit dulled down, especially with Yellen today saying that we're going to be living with inflation for at least until 2023. Right. So that was notable. In, she didn't. No indication that they're going to take it on head on. Yep, that's right. Okay, guys. Hey, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great week ahead, and uh, we'll speak next week. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. Do I look okay? Am I evenly lighted? Everything else? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, my God. You guys are seriously worse than I am. <laughs> of course. We're middle-aged men. We're like... Obviously, it's all we got. Right, exactly. <laughs> I took two hours to take a shower and get ready. <laughs> yeah, but that was after three days. <clears throat> Don't tell me about that. <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> you guys ready? Yep. Yes. Okay.